Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. Now, the XBAR theory we've proposed so far has been for English. It has been primarily about accounting for English word order and English constituent structure. But it merits consideration for how we might use X-bar theory more generally when we're talking about the world's languages. After all, we are making a claim about universal grammar, so we want to be able to account for those languages which are not like English. For this, I'm going to turn to the notion of parameter. Remember, parameters are the the um, components of our universal grammar that are built in but have settings that you can change on or off in order to account for language variation. So the English X-bar rules we've proposed are um, XP goes to uh, a specifier YP before X-bar. The adjunct rule allows the adjunct to either appear before or after the head and the complement rule puts the complement after the head. But this doesn't work for every language. Um, we instead want to be able to talk about where the complements appear in another language, say German or Turkish, or where the specifiers appear relative to the head, say in a language like Malagasy, where they appear at the end. So our proposal is that, in fact, we have parameters across these rules. And all of the rules are going to look a little bit like the adjunct rule, with an OR statement in them. So an XP can consist of a YPX or X bar YP. And the complement rule will be X bar consists of X WP or WPX. And then you choose which of these options you have when you're a baby learning the language. You figure out by listening to your parents which of the settings you use. So imagine we have these generalized rules. These are the rules that you're born with, the options you have. And it's a fairly comprehensive set. You either put the specifiers before or after or both. You either put the adjuncts before or after or both. And the same thing with the complements. So we want to, uh, of course, account for the fact that in English you cannot put the specifier on the right. The specifier has to appear on the left in English. And similarly, uh, the complement has to appear on the right in English, not on the left. So the sentence is, is totally ungrammatical. So what do we do? We propose parameters. Parameters um, are the idea that every speaker has a generalized version of the theory as part of their minds. It's part of their universal grammar, but then when they are learning their language or actually acquiring their language, they listen for the, what their parents use, and they choose the subset of options that, um, that their language chooses to use. So imagine what you have in your head is a series of switches. So here I've used light switches to indicate what I mean. So, um, and you have two options. You have the option for the specifier to appear before the head or the specifier after the head. And as a little baby, what you do is you switch the switch and decide which one you use. And in English, we switch the switch up. Um, similarly, for adjuncts, we have uh, we can either put the adjuncts after or before. In English, we set this in the middle because you can use both options. And when it comes to um, complements in English, the complements always appear to the right. So we switch it the switch here up to the top setting. In another language like Turkish, we would switch it to the bottom setting. So this is an interesting proposal because what it means is that the task a child has to, has to do to acquire the syntax of their language is simply threat, uh, set three switches. They have to listen for enough data to say, okay, it goes this way, or it goes this way, or it goes this way. And that's all they have to do. They don't have to learn those complicated phrase structure rules that we proposed before. Instead, they're born with these rules, and they just have to 
make a couple of little minor choices based on some data. In particular, they might be able to do this even just hearing a few examples that they would know enough to be able to set their parameters. This, in effect, explains why children are such good language learners. If they can do this, if they can set their parameters one way or another, just on the basis of hearing a few sentences from their parents, we have an explanation for why children can produce uh, sentences with the right word orders at the same time that they can't tie their shoes or, or, or take themselves to use the toilet. They have to, uh, they have this much higher level of skill in one area than they do in another, but um, it's explained if they're effectively born with, the, with the, um, the ability to do this through their parameters and they can just set those switches. So the English parameter settings, as we talked about, our specifiers are on the left, adjuncts can be on either side, and complements can be on the right. Let's look at another language. So here's Turkish, which is an OV language. Um, so one thing we can note here is that um, the object comes before the verb, and we know that objects are typical complements. So the, on the basis of this sentence alone, we can conclude that the complement parameter is set so that the complement is on the left. Um, if we make a jump ahead, sort of anticipating what we're going to talk about in future videos, that subjects are in fact specifiers, then the fact that the specifier, the subject, appears on the left-hand side allows us to know that the specifier rule of Turkish is the same as English. You put specifiers on the left. So to summarize, by choosing the precise set out of the three uh, of options out of the three parameters, we can derive the word order of most of the world's languages. I will say that this is not true for all languages. So VSO languages um, actually can't be accounted for this way. And we'll come back to this later in the unit on movement.